Well, can you give me a sense of how much demand there is right now for testing at the hospital? There's, uh, there's significant demand out there for uh, testing. As, uh, as has been reported, the, um, the CDC was a little bit slow in, in rolling out these, uh, these tests. And uh, at Hackensack Meridian, we did a lot to prepare for the coronavirus coming. You know, we, we started training our, our team members. When? Um, back in, uh, well, actually in January, we went through some intense training, but we were actually in Ebola uh, designated site. So many of our team members were trained back in, uh, in those days. We also uh, tried to stock up on uh, personal protective equipment to protect our team members and our physicians on pharmaceuticals. And then another piece was really preparing for this virus to come to the United States. We thought by developing our own test uh, that would be, there would be a lot of advantages. Ha ha have you had to deny patients who are showing symptoms of coronavirus, the cough, the fever, or other things? Have you had to deny them testing because of a lack of tests? There have been a lack of tests, so uh, we've had to prioritize those that have been the most uh, severe. Um, so that is that is true. And up to yesterday, when our test was approved, uh, the only test in the state of New Jersey uh, was the uh, state-run laboratory test, and they had a limited capacity. So with our test uh, now approved, we're able to really increase that capacity significantly. Dr. Perlin and his team at the uh, Center for Discovery and Innovation really did a great job. They started preparing. What they did is they developed their own test by taking the best of what I would call both worlds. So they uh, looked at the CDC model and then they looked at um, a European model that was developed in Germany and was endorsed by the World Health Organization. And they took the, the best of both of those tests and developed uh, their own model and then really validated that test. They got live virus from the CDC, and then we got approval finally yesterday morning to start testing. We started testing immediately, and we've already tested 60 patients. Dr. Perlin, how quickly can that be replicated elsewhere? <laughs> is, is it your advice to others to try and replicate this than, than wait for the sort of CDC endorsed model? So, so we have two approaches. Uh, internally, uh, we're looking to scale up. So we want to increase our throughput in the number of patients. As uh, Mr. Garrett said, 60 patients already, uh, in, in essentially in the last uh, 36 hours. Uh, we can do probably better than that. But to scale up, we need uh, skilled personnel, we need equipment. Uh, others can replicate our tests. It's, it's both scalable and uh, we can transfer it to others. We, we transferred it from my laboratory at the Center for Discovery and Innovation we, into our clinical lab. Do you have the test? I don't have the test, but what I have is um, a test swab kit. And so this is what's being used throughout, throughout the country and, and in our facilities as well, in which you use these um, test swabs um, it, and you're swabbing the nose and, in, and the mouth. It then goes into, there's a tube with a red cap. Uh, we then mix it, it's a special solution, and then we process it, and we can process it over about three and a half to four hours, and we have a definitive positive or negative test. I'd say it looks fairly fairly basic. I know it's not, and particularly what you do at the labs, it kind of still it's amazes us that we still don't, though, right? still don't have, uh, have, have yeah. the number of yeah. tests yet. But, but Dr. Pullen, remind us what is now the advice uh, as to who should be tested right. versus who shouldn't and when you should be self-isolating at home even if you're not feeling that well because people get nervous and think god i've got to go and go and make sure it, i haven't got anything worse than it feels like right so what's absolutely clear is not everybody should be tested uh, right right now the recommendation for testing uh, is uh, if a person is feeling ill they should contact their primary care physician contact uh, whoever they trust in their in their health care community get advice as to whether they warrant testing and warranting testing is probably going to mean they have shortness of breath or they have some other conditions our test right now is being used within our hospital so we're not we're not opening it up for anybody to come get tested it's being used for the most critically ill but and, how do and we those have a good sense of need. what's happening nationwide if we're not testing people but who are showing symptoms? There's, there's, different, there's stratification of testing. We need testing across the board. We need testing who've been of individuals who have been exposed to individuals who are asymptomatic. We need individuals who are symptomatic and have unclear exposure. And most importantly, we need to test rapidly those individuals who are urgently ill, and right. we can't wait a day and a half to find out what they have. 
That's why we developed this test. And because there's been such a lack of testing up to this point, that's why these mitigation strategies are so important. Social distancing, uh, not uh, having large uh, social gatherings, because otherwise the healthcare system is going to be overwhelmed all at once. So if we can slow down the spread of the virus, then at least the healthcare system in general will have a chance to, to really respond to, to the crisis. If you look at Italy, uh, it didn't happen that way, and they are totally overwhelmed right now.